Hello and welcome to the QPlay DJ tutorial. I'm going to spend the next few minutes telling you about our app and how to use it. First off, uh, let's just tap the start button and get into the app itself. In QPlay DJ, there are five screens to navigate between. This is the main screen. From here, you can visit the Q screen by rotating your device horizontally, the EQ screen by double tapping the central area where you can see all these EQ knobs and the load screen by tapping the button labeled load A which is what I'm going to tap now. There's one other screen to see and that's the BPM screen. This is accessible by tapping any of the BPM buttons on the left hand side but for now let's just get a track loaded. I've got a number of tracks to choose from here and I can arrange these tracks by track name artist name, BPM, by using the buttons at the bottom of the screen. Also, I can filter my list with the genre button at the top. By holding this button for a moment, a drop-down list will appear where I can select the genre I require. I've chosen demo tracks. So now I'm looking at the five demo tracks that come bundled with this application. You can preview any of these tracks by holding down the preview button on the right-hand side of the screen. If you're in the middle of a DJ set, Hitting this preview button won't affect the master output, it will only come through the headphone channel, so your party won't be affected. Anyway, I'll choose the top track by tapping it now. This track has now been loaded into deck A, and I can play this by tapping the play button at the bottom of the screen. Hitting the same button again will pause the track. To skip back to the beginning of a track, hit the button next to the play button labelled Go to Q Start. Remember the genre button from the load screen? Well any button with a white title has a drop down menu available. If I hold this button, or this button, or this button, a menu will appear for me to select from. The same goes for the Go to Q button. A track can have a number of points which can be instantly skipped to at any time called Q points. I've already placed a number of cue points in this track and to skip to the different points I hold down the cue button, choose a number and now whenever I tap this button it skips to that point. I'll cover the cue points in more detail later on so for now I'll just show you some more track controls. This is the volume slider you can drag it up and down to adjust the volume of the track. You'll notice that it fades away slightly when you let go that's so that you can see the waveform behind at all times. To control the track's pitch, double tap the waveform in the background and it will switch over to the pitch control. I can change back and forth between these two modes, the volume and the pitch, by double tapping in the waveform window. This is the pitch control where you can adjust the speed of the track. A track's BPM, how many beats there are per minute, is displayed here in the middle of the slider. By sliding this up and down, I can increase or decrease the speed of the track. When the slider reaches the upper and lower edges of the view, it will scroll further along, eventually getting to plus or minus 10%. If you want to snap the pitch back to 0%, double tap the slider. Even though both of your tracks may be playing at the same speed, they might be slightly out of sync. This is where the nudge buttons come into use. By tapping these buttons, the track will be shifted along a tiny amount. Tap the bottom nudge button to move through the track at a quicker rate, and tap the top button to move through the track at a slower rate. If I want to fast forward or rewind, I can do this by holding down the nudge buttons, and then letting go when the red playback marker reaches the point from which I wish to play from. Next, I'll load in another track. You'll notice how the blue Load A button has now changed to an orange Load B button. This button will automatically switch each time you load in a new track. Watch how it updates each time I load. So now it's Load A. Now it's Load B. Once more back to Load A. And by now the system's pretty easy to understand. I've just loaded a track into B. But maybe I've made a mistake. The button says load A, how do I reload track B? Remember those drop down menus from earlier? Or simply hold down the load button, select load B from the menu, and it will switch back. Now I can load B again. 
now that I finally got two tracks loaded, I need to get them playing at the same speed, making sure that they both have the same BPM. I could do this manually with the pitch sliders, but a quicker way is to use the sync button here. The sync button will automatically pitch the freshly loaded track, in this case track B, to the older one, A. So in this example, track A is already being played to the audience, and we need to bring track B to the correct pitch. That's why the pitch button currently shows sync B to A. This button works like the load button, automatically switching when a track is loaded. So if I load a new track onto track A, the button switches to sync A to B, because track A is now the fresher track. Using this sync feature, you can mix tracks with ease, but be careful, there are some tracks that are either too fast or too slow and can't be mixed together. Now let's take a look at the EQ area. I'll double tap in the central part of the screen and zoom in. By rotating these knobs, I can adjust the EQ of both tracks even cutting the entire band all the way down to zero. If I double tap the knobs, they'll return back to their central position. The top two knobs are the gain knobs. These are used exactly the same way as the EQ knobs and will return back to the center with a double tap. Also on this screen, there are volume sliders to the left and the right, controlling the volume for track A and track B without you having to leave the EQ area. Uh, and at the bottom of the screen, there's another crossfader for the same purpose. Now if I grab any part of the screen which isn't a slider or a knob and drag downwards, the screen will flick up to the output control area. But before I go into too much detail about this area, I should tell you quickly about the different headphone modes. To zoom away from the EQ, just double tap anywhere on the background and it'll zoom out. Okay, this big button at the top of the screen is the headphone button. It's currently set to master. This means that I'm listening to what my audience, or imaginary audience, are listening to. As if I'm DJing at a party with my headphones off around my neck. By holding down this button, it'll display a drop-down menu where I can select one of the other headphone modes. Now we can see a list of all the other headphone modes. You can listen to just track A or just track B, regardless of what's happening on the master channel, like DJing with your headphones completely on. Then there are another couple of modes, the mix modes. These modes have a, the Q track channel to the left ear and the master channel to the right ear. Just like having a headphone over your left ear while leaving your right ear free to listen to the monitor speaker. A nice little feature here with the headphone button is when you tap it. When you tap the button it'll switch back to the previous mode, meaning you can quickly go back and forth, back and forth between two different headphone modes, making sure that your mix is absolutely perfect. Let's get back to the output control area by double tapping on it. A moment ago I mentioned that amongst the headphone modes there are mix modes where you're listening to the cue track and the master channel at the same time. This left knob here is what controls what you're hearing in your right ear when in that mix mode. By turning this knob all the way to the left you'll hear just the cue track. By turning it all the way to the right you'll hear just the master. Leave it centered and you'll hear a mix of both. These mix modes really help with your beat matching and I advise you to give them a go. Finally, this central knob is for the volume control of the master output channel. And the knob over here to the right is the volume control for the headphone modes. Now for a very quick demonstration, we'll get B playing on the master channel, put the crossfader into this side. Load a track into track A, I'll choose this one here, sync track A up so the BPM is now the same. We can start that one playing, put it over to the mix channel so we can hear both A and B at the same time, and listen to how this fades the right hand headphone between the two. Now we'll get ready for the beat to come back in. Watch this slightly. Sounds about right. Back over to master. And now we can fade A back in. And 
and there we go. We are DJing. 